once asked a great Tai Chi master this question, Sifu, how should I breathe when doing Tai Chi? And the Sifu answered, inhale, then exhale, repeating as necessary. Hi, it's David Dorian Ross. Welcome to the Cherry Blossom Studios. Today's day number 31 of 100 days of Tai Chi, and uh, we're gonna talk about breathing today. That's the question of the day we're gonna get to. And we also have a brand new movement taking us into places we have not gone before. But you're gonna like it, I promise. All that's coming up right after this, so I'll see you in a second. Our movement today is one of the more challenging movements in the form. In fact, it begins a series of these challenging movements, and in fact, that's deliberate. It's on purpose. The whole Tai Chi long form is kind of like a journey. And as you travel along this journey, you're taken into many different places, high places, low places, middle of the road places, easy places, challenging places, and places that sometimes you don't even want to go. Well, hopefully you'll want to go into this place because it's a really beautiful movement and a signature kind of movement of Tai Chi. It's called separating the right foot. Sometimes we call this kicking with the right toe. Anyway, watch me one time and then we'll do our short and long breakdown of the movement. We're starting from the high pad on horse movement. separation of the right foot. Well, let's do the quick version just so that you can see it. And I'm gonna do this facing the camera. So flipping the camera right now, mirror image. We're starting from high pad on horse. Now the entire footwork is that I'm going to step the left foot out into the corner, step up with the right foot into a T-step, then lift the knee and extend, separating out the right foot. Right? But there's two very interesting circles here that happen with the hands. So from the end of high pad on horse position, the waist turns to the right and the two hands begin to circle out. Left hand getting a little extended, right hand coming all the way around. Then the right hand circling in, crossing over, and as I step out, it's there in the corner. Both hands reach into the corner. The left hand sort of wards off in a way over the left foot. Stepping in, I cross the right hand over the left wrist. Now, I look into my corner, lift that knee, and extend. Beautiful. All right, here is the longer version. Again, looking straight ahead. My footwork first, starting from the end of high pad on horse, when I'm in an empty step, I first delay a little bit because everything stays in the empty step, but eventually this left foot will step into the corner, 45 degrees, stepping down, almost like you were going to make a bow step, except that you continue stepping all the way up. Now, I look into the corner. At this point in time, I am facing straight forward so I look into the corner, point the knee into the corner, and then straighten out the leg, pointing the toe forward, right? Now this is important because there's actually gonna be another movement coming up later where the heel extends, the toe points, pulls back. So you wanna make sure that these two kicks look different. One's with the toe, this one, one's with the heel. All right, file that away. We're gonna come back to it because Really, it waits for the hands to start. So we have, um, I'm gonna get a little closer to the camera here so you can see the hands circling around over the top of each other. That's a bit of the action here. I start out in high pad on horse, and then I turn my body to the right, towards the corner, and that carries the hands with it. Carries the right hand to the corner, carries the left hand out in front. The right hand bends at the elbow, comes across, 
crosses over the wrist as I step out into my corner. And once again, both hands point into this corner over here, to the right corner. The left hand opens up, sort of pushes. It doesn't really change shape. It's just like I'm kind of warding off over that left foot. And then the right hand crosses over the wrist. Now my two hands are in front here. They are ready for a separation. They will turn palm out and slide apart. The right arm is going to line up right over the top of the right leg. When this right leg's come out, the right arm is just gonna be right over the top of that. Left arm is going to be exactly, see if I can show you the angle here, exactly 90 degrees, so it's like 10 and two. Remember we talked about that, 10 and two. That's my corners here. So if this hand is going to 10, this hand's going to two. After I step up here, lifting the knee, the right hand goes over the top of the kick, the left hand goes 90 degrees aside. Beautiful. Let's turn the camera back around and one more time from the regular angle. Here I am, high pad on horse. Turn the waist, crossing over, step out. Step in and cross. Look into the corner, lift, separate. That's your first kick, the separation of the right foot. The question today comes from viewer Irene Zabitko who asks, can I talk a little bit more about Tai Chi breathing? What a great question. Breathing is absolutely an essential part of the whole benefit that you get from Tai Chi and Qigong. In fact, the word in Chinese for breath is qi, the same word that we use for the inner energy. They're mixed together. Uh, the oxygen and the air that we breathe is considered to be a primary building block for the inner energy. So it's one of the essential ingredients that mixes into the body to make qi. So breathing is very important. Now, I don't always talk about specifically how to breathe when you're learning Tai Chi movements because it can really mess with your head. It can start to get you too concentrated and then you get all tight and nervous and you start to try to force the breath to match the movements and that'll just ruin your whole Tai Chi experience. Instead, if you allow it to happen, almost always your movements and your breath begin to coordinate with each other and so it becomes very natural, very authentic breathing. But if you want a more specific answer, here it goes. Everything in Tai Chi is alternating back and forth between yin and yang, between the gathering and the expanding. So for example, we have movements that open out, extend away from the center line, stepping out into lunges, reaching out with the hands. And this is considered to be the yang part of the Tai Chi move. Then we have other parts of the movements where everything returns, gathers, yields, collapses, Steps closer to the center line. We have T steps and empty steps and holding the ball positions, right? This is considered to be the yin part of the Tai Chi move. And here's the thing, as you might imagine, the breath also has yin and yang and should theoretically match the movements. So as your body moves into a yang position, your breath goes out. And as your body moves into a yin position, your breath comes in. But once again, don't force the breath to match the movements. You'll just get tightened up and in fact your chi will slow down and bottleneck. Instead, you sort of keep it in the back of your mind. And if you notice that you're way off, then you can take a look at, hmm, where am I holding or where am I breathing too fast? Anyway, Irene, thanks for that question. It's an awesome one. Now I have a question for you, and it's completely off topic of Tai Chi or breathing or anything else like this. My question is, by now, this is one of your favorite YouTube channels. Uh, I also know that you probably got other channels that you enjoy watching, and I'd like to know what they are. I'd like to see if maybe we could start getting uh, some sharing going on of what you've been watching on YouTube that's got you informed or entertained. You know, like, do you watch DIY videos or do you watch humor videos? Do you go to the all cats 24 seven videos? I mean, what are you watching right now? I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna write down in the comment section of myself what one of the channels that I'm finding 
really entertaining. And I won't tell you what it is. You're going to have to read it and find out for yourself. Anyway, write it in the comments section below, along with any other questions that you might want to ask. And uh, again, I'm doing my best to answer all the questions in the comment section and then special ones bring to the, the lesson of the day each day. So thank you for those questions. All right. If you have not done so, if I didn't convince you some other time before, or if this is your first time, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you haven't already done so, hit the share button because that spreads the love around. And once again, come on over to the website, taijifit.net. Got the link in the, the, in the um, description section below there. And we've got all kinds of good stuff. Couldn't get that come out of my mouth there. In the description section below is a link to taijifit.net. All kinds of cool stuff happens over there. So come on over and uh, check that out, would you please? All right, one last thing. That's my lesson for the day. And I just want to say thank you for giving me the chance to share that with you. I really appreciate that. Have a lovely, lovely day and evening, and I'll see you in tomorrow's lesson.